So here's a little extra bonus audio for you on the, the little segment I did with Michael Stroh. He was a professional poker player, and I've had a lot of interest in professional poker because in my early 20s, we, we just played a lot and followed a lot of the personalities in in that industry and in that career. So I thought it was cool. He, he apparently made millions as Mike, and so I thought it was worthwhile asking him, and I, I threw it up here on YouTube to introduce you to the YouTube channel, which uh, I'm going to plan to post more. But if, if you want the full interview with Michael Stroh, who's now more focused on workplace and K-12 mental health, you can uh, check out the other episode here on YouTube or you can go to lifetimeatwork.com and you can there see all the different podcast platforms that we're on and, and subscribe there to hear uh, really the full episode from this, this podcast. So please enjoy this little tidbit of an interview with Michael Stroh about his career in the poker world. Yeah, the yeah. last the last thing I did want to ask ask you about was the poker thing. Yeah, um, what, sure. So how did, how did you you just started doing it, and how why were you good? Yeah, um, just a system. I you started doing system? it during. <laughs> well, it's funny. Like so, one I think my brother helped me get into it. Yeah. And two, when the hockey strike happened, I think it was two thousand and four or something. Um, to be honest, I got into it because I was such a mess that I didn't know I was too scared to go and try and get a job. So I started beating all my friends, you know, when we would play and I thought, geez, man, I can actually make a job of this. And so I started reading every single poker book I could get my hands on. I, you know, in some ways it was poker saved me in a lot of ways because it helped me realize that I wasn't a total failure and it sort of helped lead me out of the darkness. Um, so I worked incredibly hard at it. Yeah, I definitely have a knack for numbers and problem solving and sort of that that like playground psychology, you know, where you're trying to mess with people's heads and that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so I have a knack for that for sure. And I took it incredibly seriously because I knew if I didn't make money playing poker, then I was really screwed. Right. Um, <laughs> So that, that was kind of, you know, it's like I never really wanted to be a poker player. I just became that because my alternatives were were not very, <laughs> you know, promising. Yeah. But what did you, I guess, learn? Because you don't do it now, <laughs> right? Do you play nope. poker still? No. Nope. No, um, no. I mean, one day I have dreams of of returning, though. <laughs> so, so it was an overall pot, like an overall positive experience. Then, like, do you did you did you Absolutely, enjoy being? Yeah, a, yeah, a, yeah. You you enjoyed it. I did. I loved yeah. it. I mean, I traveled a lot. I traveled to Europe. I traveled to the Caribbean. I spent a ton of time in Vegas. I met lots of amazing guys um, who taught me a ton and and who really helped me a lot. Um, and, and I was really lucky. I had a crew of guys who, I mean, these guys were world-class, like making millions of dollars. And so, um, I had a bit of a horseshoe up my butt for that. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> yeah. And, so, and, and so they is, taught me a lot and they helped. Yeah. Is the key to, um, like being good is just really understanding the odds and what everything, like all of the permutations combinations is that or, yes. or it, it, yeah yeah because yeah. especially yeah. when you're online you, you don't That's have a lot of pretty much it. tells and that sort of stuff it's more um it's more just understanding it's probabilities yeah, yeah it's yeah. probably it's really a game of probabilities and i think the idea of around tells is a little misleading because tells actually come more from how a person plays yeah. than what their face is telling you um so that's that's one thing is yeah i mean it takes a lot of practice it is mathematical and that's why you see a lot of the very successful people now are all young kids guys girls who are, are really good at math who are really disciplined um and who take it really seriously i mean it's it's no joke <laughs> you know like yeah. when you get up to those higher levels i mean it is hard <laughs> 
no i i i used to i my my group of friends and i like i got into poker just Uh it was a thing to do it was remember back in first year university we just had phases where we would go and just play you know you're trading money through everyone yeah 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 yeah. you have your day (laughs) your game or your tournament and you're all high and mighty and then you lose the next game or whatever but um you know it was more of a a fun thing to do when you had uh you, you know you could be socializing and whatever and play and it was fun but it just sort of it sort of took over it got to the point where we were we, you know, it became really popular on TV. We were watching it on TV, and that's why I have so many questions about it. I'm so curious about it because uh, it, yeah, you know, I don't totally. even think about poker anymore now. But it was at one point uh-huh. in my life uh-huh. uh, just this like it was the hobby almost or the the thing, and and uh, um, yeah, it always made me sort of curious as it as a totally. you know not something I ever thought of as a profession. So when you hear someone, you're like, oh yeah, I, I, clearly mm-hmm. there are people doing it, but <laughs> but I didn't really understand. Yeah, it yeah, yeah. It, so. Um, May, may, totally may, yeah made me curious is the scene still like just as i mean obviously COVID 19 probably changes the the, the in-person stuff but uh is it still like just as crazy as it always as it was kind of when you were in? not really no no i think it started getting so when the u.s there was a big kind of ponzi scheme going on with some of the websites oh yeah and so in I don't remember exactly, but at one point the U S government shut down international play within the U S. And so that's kind of when things started to dry up. It was probably five, six years ago. I can't yeah. remember exactly. Um, maybe even longer, but yeah, it was, uh, it was glorious at time. You know, I mean, it was fun. Like it was fun for sure. I know some of the guys that I used to know still play, although, they're getting older and getting into other things. Um, I, I like, I would love to go back and play. I mean, I would go back and play for fun really, but um, just as an, a different, I mean, somewhat, I'm a different person now, so I don't know if I'd be worse or better or what, yeah. um, but I, it's fun. You know, like I do have a good relationship with it. It was, positive experience in my life and and I did pretty well for myself so I do like to think I have fond fondness to it um and yeah it's a it's a card game you know and so yeah. as good as you are sometimes you just lose <laughs> and that's yeah. it no I oh yeah I know yeah. you can never, the, you, you can know all the odds and that sometimes doesn't matter because <laughs> anything can exactly happen. That's exactly the, that's, that's the point yeah um Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, um, so there you have it. That's a little interview that I had with with Michael and, and asked him a few questions on poker world. Crazy, crazy, uh, crazy world out there. And I'm glad he had a positive outlook on it. Um, in the meantime, you can subscribe to the podcast Lifetime at Work dot com or find me on any of your your favorite podcast platforms. And I've got a bunch of new stuff coming. So do stay tuned. And until next time, don't worry. Be happy.